At least 25 people, including a police officer, have been killed in a chaotic shootout in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Suspected drug traffickers leaping from rooftop to rooftop. The deadliest shooting in the city's history unfolding in one of Rio de Janeiro's largest favelas. Train commuters caught in the crossfire. The city's metro descending into chaos. Two passengers were hit with bullets. Both survived. Locals took to the streets protesting the bloodshed. They killed my friend, this girl yells. I want justice. I don't want to live life fast or die too young. Die too young. 100 miles per hour might crash because a good die young. Yeah, a good die young. Push it to the limit, I can't go no more. Red light, no way I'm coming back home. Long dirt road all on my own. I'm going to be the greatest on my name. What's good, people? It's your boy Worldwide Lord coming to you once again. And today I got something special for you guys, all right? I risked my life, all right? I put my life on the line for you guys, you know what I'm saying? I've been going crazy with the vlogs, man. I've been trying to release as much as possible. You know, I'm finally monetized. Thank you, Jesus, and thank you. My main goal is to blow up and then act like I don't know nobody. <laughs> you guys made this happen. I did the work, but you guys made this happen. Honestly, I've been taking it a little slow. I've been releasing my PG rated stuff. Y'all know I like to turn up, man. So y'all stay with me. I see in my comments, people like, we want to see the ladies. We want to see the beaches and the I understand that. We are going to get to that later. These next few vlogs that I'm releasing are going to be turned up a little bit more action packed and a little bit more for my viewers. I know what y'all really want to see, man. Rio de Janeiro is one of the most beautiful places I've been to, man. Whenever you go to these certain places, you can't always go to the spots where all the tourists hang out because you're not going to get the real version of Rio. So today I linked up with my boy Dave and he took me and Paul to the favelas that he was born in. By far the biggest favela in Rio de Janeiro, Rocina. And make sure you stay tuned to the end of the vlog. Dave already informed me that I won't be able to film everything, so hopefully I can get some footage. And really, I just want to go and see how the real people real live. So without further ado, this is my favela vlog. Y'all make sure y'all stay tuned to the end. Drop a like, subscribe, comment. You know the vibes. Let's go. Another beautiful day in Rio de Janeiro, man. Extending my stay for another week. Really don't know when I'm going to leave, man. Right now, man, today is Sunday. Real chill day. I'm about to go meet up with a another traveler first time traveling out the country and he came here by himself that's a big move we're gonna meet up get something to eat then we're gonna head to the favelas with one of the locals here and you know just see what we can get into today man that's that good sleep that's that good sleep what be too hot man what's good Hey, it's my guy paul man first time traveling out the country and he decided to come here by himself for a week Maybe he may maybe staying longer, I don't know. Maybe. Help me up, help me Ooh. <laughs> this is what's so enticing, man. You can come here anytime, any day. And it's gonna be packed. Whenever y'all come to Brazil, it's always good to tap in with somebody who's been to all the spots that you're trying to go to, give good advice, you know what I'm saying? Really somebody who got their ear to the streets and knows what's going on, man. So this is my boy Dave right here. What's good, Dave? What's up? Man, so tell us what we what we doing today. Right now we're going to a rooftop bar in Racinha right there. Mm -hmm. That one is Vigigal. Vigigal? Racinha right behind the favela right there. And yeah, and this is a favela, you were born in this favela? Yeah, the one behind Racine is the biggest favela in South America. Okay, cool. It's, and it's like most most of the favelas are like black people, where the black people stay at? Yeah, yeah. Or do they have different ones? Because I know here in uh, Epinema it's a, a favela, but it's it's probably like I more it, chill. Uh, uh, yeah, Copacabana is, is like we call suburbs. S suburbs, gotcha, you know? gotcha. And like, that would be the hood. This is the hood, okay. All right, cool. All right, man, so y'all stay tuned. Next up, we gonna go we're gonna go to Vigigal. So we're gonna go check that out. We're gonna ch check my boy's hood out. So right now we're in the suburbs, man. We are in the tourist area. So now we're gonna step outside the tourist area and see what's really good, man. The real real, right? This is yeah. the real real. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. All right, man. Oh, here it's only gringos like me, man. But uh, all right, man, y'all stay tuned. Let's go.
to the favela. As soon as you get to the favela, you can tell it's a different type of swag, different type of feeling. You said it's safe because what? Like people don't steal here? Yeah. In the favelas, you have these rules. You have these rules. You know, uh, if you if I steal you and the gangsters find out, I'd be killed. So it's a structure here, man. It's a real structure here. Some people have to be safe. You can leave your phone in the sand. Nobody will touch it. For real? A lot of Beautiful black girls. So right when you get to the favelas, they got plenty of people on motorcycles waiting to take you up. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk around a little bit, but then we're gonna head it back. One thing that I found that was interesting when visiting the favelas is you literally don't have to leave the favela to have a normal function of life. And when I say that, I mean they have schools, hospitals, bars, restaurants, places to play for the kids. And as I sat back and processed what I was thinking about, these kids are going to grow up and a lot of them aren't going to leave this favela. A lot of them don't get the chance to go out and see that there's more to life than just what you're born in. The good thing about favelas like this is they breed some of the strongest people in the world. Just like any other hood, these places have their ups and down but you can tell by the attitude of the people that they are strong and they are built to last of them and they respect me a lot i have a lot of uh, family in there oh, so right off the bat when we got to the favelas i was taken away because i did not expect it to be so big pause right when we got there i noticed that there was so much structure and the reason i say that is because there were multiple barbershops multiple liquor stores shoe stores cell phone stores i mean you name it they had it as soon as we got there i could tell that these type of hoods in brazil compared to the hoods in america are totally different it's crazy how they got all these little spots like. Yeah, I know yeah. where we get it. We need to see at night, bro. It's like different because there's a lot of markets. Yeah. A lot of markets. They have all kinds of markets. They have banks, McDonald's, pharmacies, everything. It's definitely wasn't what I was expecting though. That shit, huh? I like it, I like it. Cause it wasn't what I was expecting. I, I didn't think it was gonna be like a bunch of shops. So one thing I wasn't expecting about the favelas about the favelas is, you know, I really don't know what I was expecting, but there's a lot of shops. There's over 108,000 people in this one area right here. And as you can see, the wiring, they finessing electricity, they finessing water, you know what I'm saying? Look at the wires. Hell yeah. So, so how much, uh, like whenever somebody lives here, how much is rent for one, one month here? For a room, uh, a, a simple room with a bathroom? Yeah. Like 800 reais. 800 reais. In Racine, Racine is South Zone. South Zone is more expensive. Uh -huh. But in the favela I'm leaving right now, it would be like 500. For 500 and uh, a small room with the bathroom. So that's like $100, like. Yeah. That's like $100 USD. Yeah. In the favela I leave, but here is more expensive. Uh, yeah. South Zone, which is Copacabana, Panema, Leblon, is more expensive. Uh huh. So we have two options right now. We can keep keep going up by foot, which is like 25 minutes walk. Oh, hell no. <laughs> yeah. Or we can take the motorcycle. Yeah, how do we get to the motorcycle? We can get to the motorcycle. We can get there. Two ways you can go up to the favelas. You can either get on a motorcycle or you can take it or you can take a 15, 20 minute walk. 
So this is super dope to me. You can literally walk in the middle of the street, raise your hand, and there's going to be multiple motorcycles wanting to take you up and down the favelas for like $2. About to hop on. Yeah. I've been rolling, rolling, bitch, I'm on that Lou Ross If you don't sip tequila, I can't trust you, who is y'all? He deliver weed like Uber Eats, can't wait to blow it down BT just got a script, he pass him out like it's a test You might think I work at the Nike store, cause I'm out by the check She probably ain't gon' drop location shit, cause I'm right where she at I know she pretty and petite and neat, but I'ma make a mess I move around, get money like a ghost, but I'm right in the flip. Yo, man, so we just took the ride, it probably took us like three minutes Crazy seeing how narrow these streets are and I mean, they just, they just driving. I would call it reckless, but they they don't wreck out here, they say. <laughs> what, the bike broke? So it's me, my boy Dave, and we got, we waiting on Paul, man. <laughs> but his, uh, but his bike broke. <laughs> hey, I know for a fact, he's about to shit himself. Three hours later. <laughs> <laughs> you were here all the time. What you mean? the whole time you was here? No. Oh, y'all was down there. He went. He went. He started going left. I think he went. Where did you have the motorcycle, bro? On the hill. I fell off. <laughs> you what? fell. Yeah, up that steep ass hill. The bike just stopped. You look, look at my. Look at look at my leg. Shit, bro, I swear, that never happened to me. Like, I, I rode, I ride motorcycles, and I'm sitting there watching the show from 15, 14, 12, 13, 10. Blah! Watch out. You feel hard? Dog, what? Yeah. Down the, the steep ass hill right here, bro. <laughs> Damn, you rode down the hill, bro. <laughs> this shit was like this. <laughs> Listen, there were some people inside of the room. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so, right now, we're walking, man. We're walking through. <laughs> One thing that you have to do when you visit these favelas is go to a restaurant with a rooftop and just look at the view, man, and you can actually see how big these favelas really are. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Open. So they was telling me pretty much sometimes the gangsters be getting kind of mad when people come and you know, which is which is understandable because you know, I don't want somebody to come to my crib and looking at me and how I'm living like a, like a zoo animal, you know what I'm saying? But he said that most people can't, the gangsters may get mad, but they really can't do nothing if they're not the top dog. That's why you just gotta, that's why you just gotta show respect. Respect goes a long way. Come in here, don't be stupid. Keep your head down. Guy. Right there? Yeah, yeah, I can tell. They, yeah. don't, they don't live here. Yeah. They just work for the companies, but they when they bring tourists here, they only walk through the main road. Oh, uh, yeah. They don't go into the alleys. Like you. You be in the alley with it, huh? You think you talk. The reasons you need to come with people like Dave, because he's from here, you know what I'm saying? The tour guys, they're only going to take you to the main road, you know? They're not going to take you deep into the hood. What's their choice of drug here? Like In South Zone, they don't sell crack. Yeah. But in North Zone, they sell. Like, in the favela, they they sell crack. Yeah. But here it's forbidden. For real? Yeah. So here they only smoke weed and hash. hash. They, don't, they only smoke weed and hash here? Yeah. Crack is forbidden here. If you get caught smoking crack here, you get beat. They just try to keep it clean like that? Or? Yeah. Yeah. And this is the south south zone or south north zone. The south zone. North north zone said fuck it, we about that money, huh? Yeah. Which one is worse? North zone. I take it north zone probably because North you got zone trapped. because like here. Yeah. South zone is more like upscale. So anything happens here, the media is here, the TV is here. Uh, yeah. But north zone nobody cares. Yeah. 
So every, anything can happen there, no, nobody cares. Yeah. They like, I think a few months ago, police killed 25 people in the favela in Lima. Damn. Because Wait, you said what? Yeah. A few months ago, the, the police came and killed 25 people in the favela in Lima North Zone. Just because just, search on Google. Just, just because? Yeah. because or like, just because they're violent. There's a police here called Bobby. They don't come to arrest people. They come to kill people. Sheesh. See, the tour guide didn't take them to the spot. The spot yeah, here. Nice. He said, I need to fight. Oh, is this a spot? One thing that caught me off guard when I was visiting the favela is whenever you're walking through these streets, there are plenty of bars and restaurants, but on the outside looking in, you wouldn't expect these places to be upscale, high-end places. Fellas, I definitely recommend you go in and check some of these spots out because you're going to see some of the most beautiful women you've ever seen in your life. All right, so my boy Dave got us in the favelas, man. We're walking deep through the hood, deep through here, man. What's good? How, where we at with it? Hacienda Favela. Hacienda Favela? That's good. Let's go. We just saw the this man just took us to. I can't even begin to describe it, man. The living sit the living situation is crazy. I'm talking about I'm talking about AR-15s, big guns. Everybody's strapped up, man. Due to the nature of the graphic stuff that we saw, Dave told me it was best that I put my camera down and not film when I was inside the favelas in the back alleyways. And I mean, I love y'all YouTube, but I'm not finna die for y'all, okay? When I was walking through those back alleyways, it wasn't like I witnessed anything that I hadn't seen before. The only difference is I might see five or 10 guys with 10 to 20 machine guns just laying on the ground. And then five or six steps away, I might see a four or five year old kid with his friends playing around doing their everyday life. Make sure you guys stay tuned to the end of this video because I will give an in-depth description on what I saw that I couldn't record when I was in the favelas. What we just witnessed was pretty crazy, man. The living conditions, crazy. Government doing nothing for the people. But you know, that's literally every country is the same, man. They don't give a damn about the poor and they just let them do their thing. All right, man, so we just got done going through the favelas, man. It was crazy. I'm gonna go into more detail whenever I get to the house and let y'all know what's going on. So y'all stay tuned, watch my final thoughts on the favela, and I'm gonna tell you what really went down, cause right now I can't tell you exactly what happened, man. What's good, people, man? I am back. So we just got back, man. Dave took us through the favela, and at first I was like, oh man, this is cool. Hey, this is a piece of cake, you know? This is a regular hood, man, a, a big hood. 108,000 people in this one area, piled on top of each other. So then we took the motorcycles, we went up to the top of the favelas, where really everyone lives. And the bottom of the favela is like the, the, the lobby of a hotel, you know what I'm saying? It's where everybody operates, where everybody eat, drink, chill. But when you go to the top of the favelas, that's where everybody lives. You know, that's where everyday life is, man. And it was some of the craziest stuff I ever seen, bro. But I wasn't able to record a lot. And to be honest, the stuff that I saw, I wouldn't have recorded anyway. We were there for about an hour and in a span of 15 minutes I probably saw 20 to 30 machine guns and when I say machine guns I mean big 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 AK-47 big Call of Duty guns you know what I'm saying I'm talking about big bazookas <coughs> Uh, whenever we were walking in favelas, we were in, I'll, I'll show a couple of clips. A couple of clips, Dave was like, yo, put your camera down, put your camera down. And I had to hurry up and do it like this one right here. No, 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 no. The reason they had all these guns was because there were drug spots. 
you would have two to three guys every five or ten steps with machine guns. Hey, five or ten steps, you're at the next drug spot. You're at the next dope spot. You might be able to get weed here. You might be able to get cocaine here. Between all these steps, it was regular living. So I might see a five or six year old kid playing soccer with his friend. Two steps later, I might see uh, an AK-47 laying on the ground while a dude's on his phone playing video games. But um, it was a surreal experience, but they were all cool people, you know what I'm saying? They were literally just living a day-to-day -day life, just trying to get by. When Dave was taking us through these spots, um, he, eventually he stopped us and he was like, all right, we're about to enter this area where you can't have your camera out. So I'm like, so I'm on alert. You know, immediately I'm alert. I'm like, all right, man, you know, keep your head down, just keep walking, mind your business. We walked through a couple of the drug spots and I see people just sitting there posted and then he stops us. He was like, yo, bro, did y'all see them guns? I was like, hell no, nah, I ain't see no guns, man. My head was down. He was like, what? You didn't see those guns? Look, I am, I am, I don't see nothing, player. I am legally blind. But I cannot see, I'm legally blind. Just minding my business, my damn business. I'm just trying to get up out of here. I just came to see Rio, if you know what I mean. I, but I don't see nothing. Uh, he was like, man, why ain't y'all see, y'all didn't see those guns? How'd you not see that? I told Dave, I was like, man, where we come from, you keep your eyes on the prize, man. You worry about what you got going on, you keep your eyes straight, don't look here, don't look here, don't look here. And then he was like, nah, man, it's cool. You know, they ain't tripping or nothing like that. So we kept walking. And as soon as he said, did y'all see those guns and let us know we could look around and whatnot, I started seeing more machine guns than a Jason Statham movie. I started seeing more machine guns than a Chief Keef video. I started seeing more machine guns than a Chicago drill rap video in O Block. But, you know, that's just regular life for them, man. And that's what's kind of crazy to me, man. So I definitely say that you guys should visit the favelas, man. Make sure you go with people who are certified like my boy Dave. Y'all make sure y'all hit him up. There's plenty of places you can go eat, drink, and party. You just got to be street smart, be safe, and mind your business and be respectful, man. But I'm going to wrap it up, man. Make sure you like this and subscribe. And I'm going to tell you this. For all my... Uh, for all my returning followers, these next few videos is up, player. It's up. Y'all know what that means. It's up. Until then, man, y'all make sure y'all like, subscribe, and comment. Peace.